One of the coolest things about cruise vacation is the way that you pay for it. It's one of the only things that I know that you can book two, three years in advance by placing just a small deposit, and then you got all kinds of options for how you pay it off. You could pay the whole thing at once when you book it. You could pay it month by month. You could pay it week by week. You could even pay the thing day by day or not pay it at all. Just wait till the very end, to the very last moment and make a big lump payment. There's a lot of flexibility in the way that you can pay for your cruise. But what I'm here to suggest today is that you shouldn't pay your cruise off early. We'll talk about it right after this. Hey, 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 what's up everybody? Tony with La Lita Loca. Welcome to the La Lita Loca YouTube channel. If you're brand new here, I would just invite you to subscribe to the channel with the notification bell on. Every day we're talking about cruise ships and cruise news, cruise tips, cruise vlogs. You can get it all right here at La Lita Loca. Hit the subscribe button with the notification bell on so that you don't miss any of our content. And I also want to let you know we're in the middle of a special series. We are counting up to our cruise on the Carnival Breeze. This is day eight of the count up. We're making a tip video a day for 31 days. We're building out a library of tips that you can use for your cruising. And the cool thing is it's not just me giving you the tips. We're inviting you to leave a comment below with a tip that relates to the video each day. And we're going to take one of those comments every day and pin it to the top of the comments. And at the end of this series, we're going to draw one of those pinned comments and give them a prize package from our Carnival Breeze cruise. So today we're talking about paying off your cruise. Is it best to pay it all at once? Is it best to pay it a little bit at a time? Or is it best to wait till the last minute to pay the cruise? Now for me, out of sight is out of mind. If I have the money in hand the day that I book the cruise, I like to pay it off. There's other people that really are connected to cruising because they can pay monthly and then at the very end they don't have that much to pay. And then there are some folks that wait till the very end, the very last day, the final cruise payment day and pay it then. Whichever way you do it is probably personality driven, but I just want to give you this information, just a little food for thought, and maybe it'll change the way that you pay off your cruise. So the conversation really revolves around what your relationship is with your own actual money. Here's the scenario. You book a cruise today that doesn't happen for two years. You pay the thing off the day that you book it. Six months from now, the cruise goes down 5%. You call the cruise line and you say, hey, look, the price is cheaper than when I booked my cruise. Can I get some of that money back? They're like, yes, you can. Oh, you've already paid off your entire cruise. We're going to give you that money as onboard credit so that you can use it on the ship when you go cruising. Thank you. I got that money back. Six months from then, the price goes down again, another 5%. You call the cruise line, it's even cheaper now. Can I get that money? Yes, you can. We're gonna give you that money in onboard credit so that you can use it when you're on the ship. Say that happens four times. That may be out of line four times in two years, but we've seen it happen like that. A cruise go down week after week, month after month, and people are able to call and reclaim some of the money that they spent. Now, again, in this scenario, if the cruise is paid completely up front, the only thing the cruise line can do for you is give you onboard credit. And listen, onboard credit is very cool. Onboard credit is like preloading your ship account when you go on your cruise. It's like showing up and there's already money there that you can spend. It's like free money. It's almost like monopoly money. You don't have that same emotional connection. I've got a couple hundred dollars of onboard credit. So sure, why not buy a few extra pictures? It's not like it's coming out of my pocket. This is the thing I wanna lay out for you when you're thinking about onboard credit. Many times when you book a cruise and you get a special, they're gonna give you onboard credit. That's money you didn't have to come up with. That kind of onboard credit is really found money. In the scenario where you're getting onboard credit because you've already paid off the cruise, that's not like found money. That's money that you actually had, that you actually paid to the cruise line, that they're just now giving to you in a different way. That they're just now making you use it on your cruise vacation. Now I'm not saying that's bad. I think most of the time you might spend more than what you have for onboard credit anyways. But think about that. If all of a sudden your cruise price went down $100 over a two year period, was there something that you could have done with $100 during that two year period that would have made more sense than just getting it as onboard credit? Like I said in the beginning, I like to pay my cruises up front, but this thought process has been giving me pause. 
if I have enough money to pay my crews up front, would I be better off putting it in a savings account and making a little interest and then making my final payment? That requires a lot of discipline. I don't know if I am that disciplined, but I do like the idea that I have complete control of my money. All right, here's my complicated, need some discipline proposition. I'm going to try to the best of my ability to pay my crews off except for 20%. And the final 20%, I am going to wait until about a week before the final payment date is due. What that allows me to do is it gives me more control of my money. I would be surprised if my cruise fare went down more than 20% over the life of the booking. And so by paying everything but 20%, I leave myself the room to realize that money back to me if the price of the cruise goes down without it converting into onboard credit. I hope that makes sense. It does sound kind of complicated. It does seem like it's gonna require a level of discipline, but I like the idea that my actual money does not get converted into onboard credit. Again, I love onboard credit, but the onboard credit I love is the credit that's given to me free. If I use the credit card that gains points and I'm paying it off, then all of a sudden I get onboard credit that's found money. If I'm booking with a travel agent that has some sort of access to onboard credit and I can get onboard credit, I like that, that's found money. If I'm booking with the cruise line and they're running a special that gives me onboard credit where it doesn't cost me any extra money, I like that onboard credit. That's like found money. So the only distinction I'm drawing here is when your actual money becomes onboard credit. What do you think? The question for the comments is this, when is the best time to pay off your cruise? Are you disciplined enough to wait till the last minute and do more with your money, maybe make interest in a savings account, Or are you like me and it's best just to pay it off so you got it done? Leave a comment below. Would love to hear it. Thanks for stopping by. I I hope this tip was at least thought-provoking. I would love to hear your comments. Follow us on all of our social media. Don't forget to subscribe. Again, this is Tony with La Lida Loca. And until the next time, we'll see you on the Lido. Bye.